Is there somebody here? Or is this just an empty? I want to read something real quick that you guys hear almost. I, don't, I wish I had this memorized. But you guys hear it every meeting. Most holy and glorious Lord God, the giver of all good gifts and graces, thou hast promised where two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt be in the midst of them and bless them. Interesting. So, the book that comes from the Bible is actually referring to how to keep harmony. When approaching a brother who has having issues, two or three are gathered together. Rather than going up one on one. Because if I go one on one to my brother John over here, it could be taken as personal. But where two or three are gathered together in, in friendly manner, right? To aid this reformation. So Every little bit of our work is steeped in this idea of defusing conflict before it happens, preventing it. And it, if it does come out, the whole idea is to stop it immediately and keep everybody safe and harmonious. Because we all know that harmony is the what? Strength is the word. Especially is ours. ours. Exactly. <laughs> well, the key to this one is to learn how to remain in control at all times. Support anyone anywhere with any issue to and avoid the wrong response. Now, guys, I'll just give a quick background on me. I'm a special needs teacher. I teach at a school for extreme at-risk youth. When they leave me, they if they don't get through our school, they go either to a juvenile detention center or they go to a, a hospital designed for holding them. So I get a lot of uh, <coughs> confrontation between physical and just verbal abuse and things like that. So I have dealt with situations that most people would either snap and beat up somebody or things like that. Yes, but Well, most of the time when you have somebody that's in conflict, it's usually the person in control. We'll work on that. Yeah. We will talk about that. And where I get all this stuff is from is called One Response. I went through One Response training. It's how to defuse anybody at any time without losing control treating them with dignity, and keeping everybody safe. So we will walk through this little process we have. One of the things I wanted to uh, look at right here is, notice how it says, anyone, anywhere, anytime issue to avoid response. So, who here knows the charge? Which one for the end of the meeting? Several of us. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to use my foil back there. He, I told him he's going to be my foil. <laughs> Go ahead, Dan, stand up. What does the charge say? The brethren, we are about to put the thing. Take your three friends and virgin. Yeah. How yeah. far do you want to go? Yeah. Go all the way through. To mingle again with the outer world. We made his concerns and employments that it's not forget the duties which you have heard so frequently inculcated and forcefully recommended inside. Be diligent, prudent, temperate, discreet. Remember that at this altar, you have promised to befriend a friend or any brother who, every brother, every, every, brother. every brother who shall need your kindness in them, to endeavor to aid his reformation and to defend his character. These generous principles extend further for every human being has a call upon your kind office. Do good unto all. Finally, my brethren, be ye all of one mind. Live in peace. And may the God of love and peace delight to dwell with you and bless you. And you're just messing with me now, ain't you? Be good. Be good. Dan, Dan is, uh, he's my senior warden in my life, so I have to pick up. He's my brother, so he picks on me back. I'm the secretary. So. <laughs> but uh, every human being has a claim upon your kind office. Wow. That means. The young punk at the bus stop 
has a claim upon your kind office. The waiter that ticked you off has a claim upon your kind office. Wow. Hard to live those words, isn't it, sometimes, when you think about it in that way. All right, conflict management, we're going to talk about understanding the initial stages of conflict, de-escalation and intervention, and prevention. The initial stages of conflict is the alarm reaction, situation stress, thinking barriers, cognitive distortions, and relationships. These are the things you need to know about the initial stages. Alarm reaction. Have any heavy ideas of what the alarm reaction would be? Exactly. What's the first thought out of your mouth? When, first thought in your head when someone says, kiss mine. Take it personally. How much adrenaline I'm pumping through my veins. Adrenaline pumping. Your heartbeat goes up. You start feeling it. Yeah. We can kick off now. It's party time, right? You're going to have to jump up and kick my tail. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, what happens is your survival brain kicks in. Now, you guys heard flight or fright, right? Mm -hmm. Not really true. The human mind is really more flight than fight. We would rather avoid a situation than to fight somebody. Else. So, things that happen is you freeze, right? What? I can't believe what Brother Mason just told me he's going to kick my head. I cannot believe that actually happened. Right? The flight may only be brief. Why do I have to stand here and take this? Could I move? Can I get away from this thing? Right? But then I'll lose face. What do I do? Yeah. Right? right? See what happens? I move forward. And then the fright, when I realize he stands up and he's five inches taller than me and outweighs me by another 50 pounds. Oh. Thank you, brother. Hey, point me. And there it is. Yeah, he's got a stick. And he's carrying a big stick, exactly. So, the problem is with the survival brain, it can be bad. Because you stop thinking rationally. You stop thinking completely because your first thing is what? React. Right? And the second bullet really sums up what really happens for most of us. Until you've been in the situation and aware of what your survival brain is doing to you, you take it personally. <coughs> So what is the survival brain if that person said he's going to kick my ass really thinking? He's in a survival brain mode. Is he thinking? No, he's not. I've done something. Or he feels that he's in a situation where he wants to get out of it. He's lashing out. And since I'm standing in front of him and I won't move, he's gone from what? He can't freeze. He can't fly, so what is he going to do? <laughs> He's going to stand up and fly. So, how many people have been in a car accident? Or near a car accident? How many people have been in a situation where someone's going to beat you up? <laughs> right? Your first instinct, what happens? Your, your baseline, you're just sitting here now having fun. We're laughing. Kind of feeling good about it. The alarm reaction, your heartbeat goes up, stress level, adrenaline starts kicking, you start feeling strong, right? But afterwards, what do you feel like? Exhausted. More yeah. out. Yeah. You're dumb. Well, the problem is, is if we keep hitting that same situation over and over again. So he went from fight to flight. Or he went from, how do we go? Freeze, Freeze. right? Yeah. Freeze, flight, flight, flight fright. Fight fight and then fright, guess what? You can go through that cycle over and over and over and over and over again. And the more you do that, the more worked up the situation gets because you return to it, not quite baseline, but you start over again. Exhaustion, 
build, exhaustion, build, and you start going uphill, and then you get to the point where, guess what? You don't run out of gas. I'm not thinking anymore. I just walk out, and whoever's in my way, guess what? I'm going through them. You know? And then you have 15 police officers sitting on top, and you have no clue why it happened. <laughs> it's true, I'm just saying. Okay, so the first thing that you have to worry about is your own thinking barriers. How do you react when you run into this situation? What are you going to do when that first person does this to you? What's the situation in the lodge? How many, how many people have planned something and put a lot of their time and effort into something? Someone stands up and lodge and says, that's crap. We're not admitting it. <laughs> We're burying that at the little lawnmower outside and then for the four hours. <laughs> but you see what I'm getting at, though, is that it happens. Mm -hmm. And although you may not show it because you may go into the freeze, flight, you may walk out the room, but you've been hurt. And remember I said this thing is a building scale, so the next time it happens, guess what? You're a little bit closer to that. I'm going to blow up though. But as long as you understand your own how you think, you can respond appropriately. All right? Managing yourself mentally, understanding how, how they may be thinking. Hey, maybe I should just, instead of standing up in this space, what if I step back? Am I really giving up my pride by giving a place to stand up for him to walk out? Now you're clearing space. I'm creating space for you to succeed. Exactly. And you're realizing that the same thinking barrier you're having is the same one that he's having. Now, look at the statements at the bottom there. Oh, come on, this will never end. <laughs> Why do these things keep happening to me? <laughs> this is so frustrating. I can't take it anymore. How many people have heard those? So what's happening? They're becoming more and more elevated. When you start hearing these things, warning bells should go off in your head. Hmm. This person's starting to have an issue. Maybe we need to create some space and find a way to talk to them about it. Because the reality is, is that you know it's going to end sooner or later, right? Right? Things don't always happen to you. Right? It may seem like that, but that just means because you're making bad choices. Hmm. <laughs> you know, why do I keep getting speeding tickets? Stop speeding! Right? It's so true. It becomes frustrating because now your insurance is so high, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes, it, why do these things always happen to me? I keep getting speeding tickets. I just don't get it. All right. It happens. Yeah. That's that big, big black numbers on the side. Maybe they, need, maybe they, need, maybe they need to raise the speed. Of the speed of the <laughs> Relationships. Here is where your strength as a Mason works. Especially with other Masons. Uh, if you know the person that's escalated, you can kind of read him. Like, I know when Dan's getting ticked off. It's usually when I take away his whiskey. Before <laughs> 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 or multiple. What kind of is conflict <laughs> management, not creation. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Let's see, I know when it's going to happen. <laughs> I should manage it, right? But how do you do it if you don't know the person? Brand new guy just showed up at Lodge, he's a new Mason, or he's a Mason from another Lodge. And suddenly one of your brothers gets up and says, you know, I don't want to sit in Lodge with this person. Conflict begins. You have the code to back up on. Right. But you tell me he's entitled to his own opinion, but the other brothers might not follow his lead. Well, there's That's some things. Why. What is your role to find in a Masonic code? Yeah. There's certain things you can and can't do with Masonic Code, right? Right? What's your position in the lodge? Is it your duty to actually mess with that? As a Mason, what is your job? 
I have to put my glass on because it's going to make me read again. Brotherly love and friendship. Brotherly love and friendship is a mason. Where's Jimmy Hoffa with the semen shoes? So I want you to, because all you guys are planning on being a worshipful master at one time, right? Okay. In the charge to the masters. All right. Make sure I get the right part. Okay. Leadership is comparatively simple, but it requires constant exertion, a clear understanding of the principles and tenets of the fraternity, and through knowledge and observation of its laws and regulations, be cautious in your behavior, courteous to your brethren, and faithful to your lodge. Visit the sick, afflicted, and tender them sympathy and relief. Become well acquainted with each member of your lodge. Study his nature and be ready to give due praise to his earnest efforts and to guide him in his error. Familiar yourself with the Masonic Code of this jurisdiction and thoroughly commit the standard word. Wow. And another thing, if you're going to try to correct somebody, don't do it in, a bunch of, in front of a bunch of people. Take him aside. Don't do it and, 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 and yeah. try to embarrass the guy. Take him aside. We're going to actually get to that point here okay. in a little bit. But pretty heavy words when you think about it. That's how you're charged as a <laughs> worshipful master when you're installed. Yep. Interesting how that reflects what we're talking about. Get to know your brothers. Develop that relationship. Understand what ticks him off. Right? Understand that conflict before it happens, so guess what? You can plan to, on how to approach it rather than stepping right in and stepping on his toes. Because You know, if you mess with the light bulbs in our temple, certain person's going to get ticked off. Right? That's the way it works. Certain lodges have that. You know you have that one person that that's their thing. Okay, de-escalation and intervention. So once he's ticked off and he's standing up in your face, what do you do? Choke him. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that violates the safety and dignity rule. He's just cutting off his air supply for a little while. <laughs> okay, so your initial response. And the second one is unplug the power struggle. See? Yeah. <laughs> exactly what you're saying. Okay, now we have what we call a de-escalation compass. You know what that is in the Masonic world? Standard work, and what's the other one? Washington Masonic Code. It tells you what you can and can't do. What is your power? What, what do you do as a worshipful master? Rules and regulations guide on what you will and cannot do. So you have a situation where Another brother comes up and claims that his daughter, which is married to another brother, is being abused. The courts are at taking action. What can you do as a worshipful master? He's going to be mad sitting in lodge with this guy. What does the code say? They're both members of your lodge. So they can't do anything. Can't force the other guy to leave your lodge. Can't do anything. Ugly situation. Could get really ugly, right? <clears throat> right. But as worshipful master, how do you deal with it? Can you press charges yet? No. No. There's been no action. No. Anything. No real. It's a he said, she he said thing, right? Yeah. No. It's, it's all heresy so far. But it's still going to cause a property problem in your lodge. So is being silent, not doing anything going to help? No. So one of the things you can do is, first of all, figure out what you're, what you're, how you're obligated to respond. All right, we're obligated as masons to maintain harmony. Can you remind that brother of the harmony that he's supposed to maintain, no matter what? And you only hear on one side of the story, too. Yeah. But you have to do with both of them. You have to talk to both of them. You can't just do it by yourself, right? Right. You can't be one person. How many people should you take with you? Two, two, or, two, or, two. two or three. Two or three.
Two or three. More means you're gang tackling. You're beating up on somebody, right? Two or three. Hey guys, you know we gotta keep the lodge together, harmony. You know, let's go talk to brother Fred and say, hey, you know, we need to make sure that you stay away from brother so and so because this issue is going on between the two until things even out and we find out the truth. <coughs> Right. You don't want to throw accusations at him, because what's going to happen? He's going to become like defensive. Sides. He's going to get defensive. Mm -hmm. Right? What's that first bullet say? <laughs> Any volunteers to read the first bullet? Escalation time is not teaching time. Escalation time is not teaching time, because why do you think that's true? Yeah, he ain't listening. He ain't Survival brain's in charge. All right? The right. only thing I see is red. I'm kicking butt. All right? I've just been accused of beating up on my wife. Now, guys, I'm letting you know that this is a personal and actual happened experience. This is not something I'm making up. <coughs> this happens in Lodge. All right? This happens. Yes. All right. So, what's driving this person? So these are the questions you might want to ask to try and work this out, okay? Why are you so ticked off? Is there something I can help you with? What do you, what do you want to achieve? If you would like to leave, more power to you, right? Create space, right? You'll need to constantly assess what is happening. That means you're not making accusations, you're not jumping to a solutions, you're continuing to ask questions. What's bothering you? What's going on? How can I help you? What do you want to do with this? Sometimes <coughs> being silent is the best thing to do. If as long as you give him space, you can be quiet for a while until he's figuring out what he really wants to do. Because if he's yelling and he's not waiting for you to answer any questions, Right? Yeah. He's not thinking, you're talking, it's not going to do anything. Silence doesn't add any fuel to the fire. I think I skipped ahead on the slide. It doesn't add any fuel to the fire. But it burns out the fires of wood. Yeah, because he might just want to bend. He might just be mad. So yeah. And you can continue to assess, because once you stop assessing, thinking you have a solution, that's when you might pick the wrong answer. Right? You may say the wrong thing. Right? Yes. If, if this actually happened within the confines of an open lodge, would you uh, uh, call a recess or go off session? I would probably go off session immediately at this point and ask the brethren to exit, except those that are involved. And make sure that the doorway remains wide open. I may ask the brother to go ahead and leave, and I will talk to him at a later time. You have to call for refreshment. You couldn't call for a setup, right? <laughs> Bring the Tyler in. You can call off session any time you want. But if you call off session, you call free from restraint. You can't leave the lodge. Okay. I just call off session and say, you know, why don't we? People can leave the lodge. Well, they have to sign out. But so the whole point is you want to create an environment where you can allow the person space and time to leave quickly, all right? Without embarrassing himself further, he's already going to be embarrassed enough once he realizes what he did. Because to be honest, we don't allow people into our lodges technically, right? Our masons are our brothers. We are, from the time they say they're an entered apprentice, guess what? We're responsible for their reformation. And to defend their character. And yeah. to defend their character. <laughs> so ask questions rather than give commands. Why are you upset? What do you want to achieve? Because if you tell him to get out right now, then he doesn't go. Yeah, you have to ask that, yeah. <laughs> then, the, then the situation is escalated to another level. You're escalating it and escalating it and escalating. The whole idea is to slow it down without giving in always to their demands. 
You don't want to use violence. You don't want to use coercion. If you don't leave now, then we're going to file charges against you. That's coercion. I'm giving you no other choice. I'm only going to give you one option. Right? It's not right. Think clearly. Avoid coercion and violence. With a question mark. Yes. So choking is an option. <laughs> <laughs> the only time you should get physical is when other person's safety is involved. Yeah. And I suggest if you have not been trained to do it properly, then you avoid it because otherwise the police will become involved. Right? You know, if the man pulls out a gun in the middle of the lodge, first you yell at the tiler and you check stuff, right? But don't. No. Then you have to do something, right? Something has to be done. The tire is supposed to check for guns? No. <laughs> but. There's no guns, by the way. What laws are you guys going to So, behavior is a form of communication. So, by where you position yourself, if you block the exit, <laughs> what are you denying him? The, his first instinct is to what? Like, like, I'll be honest. Most of your brothers will leave Lot before they get to the point where they're going to blow up. So, most of them will. Recognize that when someone gets up and walks out of the lodge right away, that something's wrong. Because it will come back to haunt you later. Strongly possible. Strong possibility that they have never entered lodge to begin with because they're afraid they're going to blow up. That's true too. Whether he goes along to the so if you see someone get up and walk out of lodge, especially after someone's criticized a project or something, you need to make a mental note. I need to contact this person to find out what's really going on. Because the reality is you don't want to lose members. No, how many people would like to lose a brother? Yeah, in, yeah. Uh, once in a watch brother. <laughs> <laughs> You've never met my brother, Ralph. How you done talking to yeah, me? Uh, for me, I treat all of you guys are my brothers, as if you were my birth brother. That's the way it should be. That doesn't mean you sometimes lie. Well, yeah, you're yeah. birth brother. <laughs> <laughs> brother. Well, if, you, if, you bought, if you met my brother Ralph, you, you Yeah, Dan already knows. We treat each other as brothers. We're always in trouble. I mean, <laughs> causing trouble? There it is. Mr. Yeah. Don't invade the person's space. Like I said, once I step forward, guess what I created? Lack of space. Lack of space. You want to create space. Now, space isn't always a physical environment. You don't want to say, get out, you got five seconds to get out. Because you just, basically, you've invaded space again, right? Space is time. People need time to kind of sort through things and figure out what they've actually done. This wasn't that choice. Now here's the real meat of this thing. Prevention, a proactive environment to be a role model. Conflict management, this is the meat of it here. If you do this part here, you'll never have to, well, you should never have to worry about the other part. Proactive environment. How many of you officers know what your role is? What's the job that you're supposed to do? You got it? Yeah. Of, okay. What do you do when the master has to step out of the office to go to talk to somebody if you're the senior warden? You take over. The take over. There you go. These little little things. Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody in here has had to do it, have they? Move up in the middle of a meeting? I've seen it done. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. What about expectations as a mason? We go through our education system. We teach people, the entered apprentice comes in and we talk to them about his degree and what it means, what he's saying in his obligation. In his second degree, what he's saying in his obligation, what does it really mean or does he just memorize it? He goes out and proves up. Because all these little expectations you put on them, what 
them know the relationship, their relationship, that's amazing. They understand what brotherly love and friendship is. They understand that we need more air conditioning in this room. There's two more. But <laughs> I'm seeing a little knot and joke on there. <laughs> they understand that they shall not strike a brother in anger. They understand their role as chalk. All these little things that we get in our education sometimes we overlook really fast. We don't build those expectations. So they don't understand what it really is to be a Mason until it's too late or something bad starting to happen. Right? So we build this into them and we start treating each other as real brothers. Trying to anticipate sensitive subjects and plan accordingly. Like if we were to remove the candles that we have in our lodge right now and switch them out with something new. chuckling <laughs> 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 because he knows every one of those candles has a little plaque on it with a brother Mason that sits in our lodge's name on it. You know, donated by, you know. So think about those things. That's a sensitive subject. It may have to get done, you know. It's a fire hazard, you know. They're so broken they might fall over or whatever, you know. Thankfully it's not the case at this point. But you have to think about those things and you can do this at your lodge officers meetings. You can say, hey, we need to bring this up. How are we going to do this? Let's war game this. What's the worst that can happen? What are we going to do if the worst happens? When an apprentice comes into your lodge and says, I don't think so, what is on, on a, doing his obligation. What do you do? Hold my other cables out. Right. But how do you do that? <laughs> have you ever re have you ever rehearsed it? No. No. Has anybody ever had it happen? No. Oh. Yeah, oh, we should have seen the looks on all our faces. Um, sir, would you please stand up? Nice and quietly walk him out. Conflict resolution. Right? It may happen. You'd be surprised. You yank on that, what's going to happen if you yank on that cable tub? You're going to have a fight on how big you are. World War III, right? <laughs> right? Right? Some subjects should be avoided in lodge. As a worshipful master, guess what? You control. Everything that's brought up in that lodge. Okay, go to me. Exactly. I think we should all vote for McCain. <laughs> not the lodge. That's all it takes. Nope, not the lodge. We're going to avoid that one right now. Stay away from that as far as possible. You have that power as a worshipful master. And junior and senior wardens, what should you be counseling your worshipful master on when he's coming up and he knows he's going to tick off somebody? Don't do it. <laughs> Maybe we should approach this a different way. Yeah. You know, this is, might not be the brightest thing, and the smartest thing to do at this moment. <laughs> or I have concerns with what might be happening there. What if the problem? Okay. We have to go back to our code. The code says defines what you can do as a mason. All right? Correct. You have to look at your code, and then you may have to go to the district deputy. But I would probably approach a couple past masters and ask your question first. See if they're see if your actions. See of your witnessing of what you are seeing is valid before addressing it in any other manner. And then how should you approach that even after that? Is this during lodge? Then you go to a higher authority. Maybe right? not during lodge, but sometime after. Yeah. Two or three together. Why not more than three? You're ganging up on them. You're ganging up on them. Less than three, guess what? Less than one, one person by yourself, you're just picking on them as you're being me. Because you don't like it. <coughs> How many times you guys heard that? So-and-so doesn't like me. 
I don't want to hang around with him because he doesn't like me, because maybe that's the way he approached it one time. So. Any other things that we could use as preventative measures? How could you prevent this harmony in your life? <laughs> I gave away one expectation, building expectations. Cool. Yeah, I'll, it's the old golden rule, you know, you want to be treated. Yeah. Education. Why don't you start teaching code in law? Well, wait, aren't you supposed to do that as a worship master? <laughs> yes, that's every law. Supposed to teach. Now, what is always the ones that we talk about? What are the what are the subjects you guys teach in Lodge about the code? Different voting, different things you're gonna do with the lodge. Voting. So can voting become an issue if someone yeah, doesn't understand yeah. the process? Yeah. Yes. Some people have had someone quit the lodge because their buddy didn't become a member. He came back after a while, but after he figured out that guess what, you know, or they walk out because. Their idea didn't get voted. <coughs> didn't get voted in. They'll take my toys and go home. Exactly. Is that really true? No, they're trying to avoid what they perceive as embarrassment. They're avoiding it rather than confronting it or just you know. They're using the flight method. Now, granted, you guys don't have the issues I get at school, you know, where so and so broke my pencil, so I'm going to kill them. <laughs> right? Or because that person doesn't stop making noise, I'm going to have to hurt them and make them stop. Right? That's the issues I have to deal with at work. But on the same level, that kind of just these little things, pinpricks, can develop into something much worse if you don't address it. So education is one. Work on the code. Look at the things that the code deals with that can cause issues. Balloting, right? Can anybody name something else that would be covered in the code? Besides the balloting. Say more than change the locks on the doors and didn't give keys to the past masters. <laughs> How's that covered in the code? Anybody know? Isn't that property? Temple board operating. Oh, yeah. Temple board operates completely separate from the lodge. <coughs> it's a property, property management thing, sorry. It's a property management thing. Nothing against you, they're just running a business. The secretary doesn't want anybody to review his records. Oh, that's outside the Masonic Code. It is right in the Masonic Code. No, no he's saying that right action is outside. That oh, what's outside? Is outside. outside. Right. Oh, I thought you said what. So those, those, those become things where you may have to grab two or three masters or remind it and I'll be honest I actually had that situation oh, you know, the secretary is not want to that law. let us <laughs> <laughs> I was in Ashmore Lodge we had a lot of little issues when I first got in there just little things like that and to be honest the reality was is it wasn't those little issues the big thing is is we're a bunch of guys new guys coming in making changes yep mm -hmm. If you're making changes, guess what? You're going to have resistance. Resistance. Threat to resistance. resistance. When you make changes in an organization, the people that made those original plans, that did those initial investments, and did all this new stuff, you know what they're thinking? Scrapping all our hard work. <laughs> you're scrapping all our hard work, or... You're going to kill our lodge. You think you're going to kill our lodge, or... I did something wrong. My stuff is messed up. You think I'm stupid. Because we take it personal. Things that you hold dear to. You know, if someone changes it, what, well, how do you feel? Now, these guys really care about their lodges. They've been there forever, 50 year members. And you've been a secretary for 17 years, and suddenly you want to come in and make changes. Guess what? <laughs> Only 17 years. <laughs> I've been in there three years and I'm ready to go. <laughs> it's time for me to move on. But yes. One of the best ways to handle those situations is find out who came up with that particular procedure before. Go to them and say, hey, you know, maybe we need to tweak this a little bit. And I'd really like you to 
help so and so or be with so and so to do it. Oh yeah, bring them into it. Say, oh, I like bring them you. into it. See, that's an excellent way to defuse the situation. But what did we do first? Well, we found out what the real motivation was. We had to do the assessment to figure out what's right. really causing the problem. The problem wasn't that he didn't want to see your books and he was trying to be outside the code. He didn't want to be called stupid. It's not that you're killing the lodge. You're changing something he put tons of hours into and he really hated it. You know, that's 90 percent of our things are just bad communication problems. Or no oh well, when we get escalated, what do we stop doing? We stop communicating. Communication doesn't work. That's why at the time of escalation, that's not the time to be talking because we're not going to hear it. And you're just going to continue that escalation cycle and you don't want it to get to the point where it's physical. The role model. That's the hard part. That's the hardest part of the whole thing. Act professionally and avoid what pejorative. Negative judgmental. That's a fancy word. I hate those fancy words. They're broad, sweeping statements that have a negative connotation. Not necessarily something bad, but it has this negative connotation to it. Idea that, you know, the old timers group. You're just them old guys. You know, you're the, what do we call that? Curmudgeons. The curmudgeons. What about the guys in the, uh, the roundabouts? Yeah. What do you call those guys that have been, uh, you know, <laughs> running the lodge from the, from the sidelines? Uh, the sideliners. That's a pejorative term. Yeah. A pejorative term. Oh, the word up there when stated. That a big long word. That's a term that's broad. Sideliners is really means is that everybody on the sideline, but does it include everybody? No. Who are you really focusing on? The guys on the north side the of the lodge. The guy that's back in the corner that's chaining that's gone, he forgot to say it. <laughs> he said on instead of it. Where have I know. heard that? But now in there. And you put now in there. You put a comma, they paused. <laughs> Right? So when you say something like that as the master of lodge, look, the sideliners need to be quiet, guess what you've just done? The person that did it knows what you mean. <laughs> they know what you mean, and so does everybody else. But what have you done? You've escalated. Yeah, you may all know. You didn't mean to, because to be honest, you just want the lodge to knock it off, you know? So in a situation like that, what would you do? And you, as a master, what would you do? So there's only one prompter. Okay. There's only one prompter. It's part of planning. You're going to have to plan for it. Because guess right. what? How many people got sidelanders in their life? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, I can't use that term. How many people have multiple prompters in their life? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, so you yeah, use the situation to start when you say, hey, by the way, we have, you know, Bob's our prompter today. To make sure we give him the chance to And then if you hear those little mumblings inside, you try to yell, there's only one problem. And continue on. I've heard that raising the lodge um, works. Yeah. There's Just raise everybody up. It's yeah. stopped stop to everything. Suddenly yeah. <laughs> so get their attention really quick. Things are focused. And you can say, you know, before you start that, or even after you've raised the lodge, look, we're trying to keep the sideline comments to a minimum. Let's keep the conversation going. I've not accused anybody. And you sit the lodge back down and go back to business. All right? Acting professionally. So does acting professionally mean that I take <coughs> personal when he said he's going to kick my ass? No. no. You have to realize that he's mad, mad at something. Not just not you. The other part is, is guess what? This worshipful master, the officer of the lodge, who do you represent? Everybody's the grand master. master. You represent the lodge, you represent masonry as a whole. So how you react lends to credibility. Knowing your roles and boundaries, that's kind of, I won't say it's obvious, but it's there. I mean, you have to know what your authority is as worshipful master. 
You have to know what the code says your authority is to work with the pastor. All right? Who's supposed to take complaints for judicial actions? Your warden. Your warden. He's the one that files complaints. Supposed to take them. Here's the three things you need to keep in mind for all of you. Does it meet the needs of you, your organization, not you, because you don't take things personal, right? Your organization and the person that's causing the problem. That angry kid at the bus stop. Is it worth it for you to go down and throw down and beat him up and leave him in a heap next to the bus stop? Make you feel good, but what would that say about Mason, especially when you got your giant, I call it my game colors on my big Mason jacket. Right? Does it make you feel good to do that? Well, it might make you feel good, but does it meet the needs? Does it reflect respect and dignity on the person and your organization? And the last one, does it maintain the safety of everyone? Because everyone has a claim on your kind of That's the hard part. The role model is living in the slaughter. That's the hard part. Right. So, this is the three ones you want to remember. So when someone's mad at you, stop for a second. Think. What does he really want? What does he need? How can I get out of the situation and keep dignity and respect? Right? The way to put that together. And how can I get out of it and still be alive and make sure everybody else is it together? And go 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 and what ended up happening afterwards is they ended up, one actually moved out of out of town. The court case said that he wasn't guilty, so we couldn't do anything with it. But you have to wait till uh, ju if judicial system's involved, guess what? We can't jump the gun. Unless you were a Mason and you physically saw it happen. So he was found innocent? Yeah, he was found innocent. innocent. So unless you physically you know, I saw him slap his wife. Well, then, sorry. Now I got to go see my senior warden file charges. Yes. Now, how about something outside of the code? Um, as a junior warden, I'm responsible for keeping brother from turning to intemperance and excess. We have drinking in our lodge. We have a member that drinks to an uncomfortable level before he goes into lodge. Oops. And he's confrontational. If you address the fact that there's not enough beer in the fridge, and they drink too many beers to go in, is that that's one where a partial master and probably two or three brothers should two or three, no more than that, might want to approach him and say, you know, when you drink too much, you start acting unresponsive. That was Snickers. Have the Snickers, yeah. Have the Snickers. Now, that may or may not work. But remember that, you know, I'm sorry we won't be able to serve you because guess what your position is? And that's for the good of the lodge, right? And the good of the order. So, you know, peace and harmony prevailing because your worship master is, guess what? He's the, where does the buck stop? Here. At the worship master's. Yeah, around right. his neck. So, you know, it may be you may approach and make sure you're in. The worshipful master has to understand.